What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we were able to get out in the garden today because still no snow on the ground, so I figured I would take the opportunity to get out here. I love any time I can be in the garden, and so uh, I'm really glad that you guys decided to join me for today's episode because we are in the garden today to talk about something that I feel is very important to talk about. Now, I don't wanna be too alarmist, and I definitely don't wanna you know, cause any, uh, cause any undue stress and anxiety, but I do think there are some things that I really wanna talk about in the topic of garden planning that have been that have been brought up in our inbox and uh, you know our email and things like that that uh, are really worth addressing and that is around the topic of shortages so a lot of you know this year has been a year of shortages there have been toilet paper shortages there have been bleach shortages there have been mask shortages there have been so many different shortages going on but there are so many shortages going on in the gardening industry and I wanted to do my, uh, kind of do my part to warn you all about those things because I don't want all of you to go, you know, kind of go through winter, get excited about gardening, only to find yourself kind of uh, caught with your pants down, <laughs> for a lack of a better example, because you waited and procrastinated to start a garden in the springtime when you normally would. Now I've always said this and it doesn't change just because it's been a, a weird year the best time to garden plan is in the fall and winter. That's when the least amount of people are doing it. That's when you're gonna get the best deals. You're gonna have the most time to really cross your T's, dot your, dot your I's, and really make sure that the garden is going to be as successful as it possibly can be. And so with that being said, I wanna go through some points of things that I do not want you guys to procrastinate on when starting your garden for next year. All right, let's go. All right, so the first thing I want you all to consider when starting your garden for next year are materials. What materials are you going to be using to build your garden? Now, if it's an in-ground garden, you might want to look at rototillers. Rototillers right now are actually on sale, and I would strongly recommend picking them up now because when spring comes, there are going to be very, very few of them. Uh, engine manufacturers are noting that there are huge shortages down the supply line um, because of just different, different shortages and slowdowns and um, things like that with disruptions in the supply chain that rototillers are going to be very hard to come by in the spring. Com you know, obviously combine that with the fact that everyone wants to start a garden, there are going to be uh, quite a few people kind of uh, c competing for those limit for that limited supply of rototillers. So that's if you're growing in ground. If you're growing in something like raised beds, like what we're growing in, you want to look at lumber. Getting lumber now. Now you're going to pay up for it. Lumber is very expensive right now. Over the past year, there was actually a housing boom, believe it or not, and that's because interest rates were so low that people realized it was a great time to upgrade a home or uh, to build their dream home, and they found that uh, there was a huge housing boom, and that caused there to be a lot of shortages with lumber. Now lumber right now, like I said, is very expensive, but we don't know what's going to happen in the spring. And they are expecting there to be even more lumber shortages as we kind of continue because interest rates have only gotten lower. And right now, we're the benefit is that we're kind of in a buffer from winter. There's not a lot of home building going on because home building doesn't really go very well in the winter. It also doesn't go very well because the home market kind of slows down a little bit in the winter months. And so you have some time that you're being afforded to get your lumber now so that you don't have the shortages in the spring. I went to our lumber yard because I needed to replace some of the wood boards on our raised beds. And even this year, I had a very hard time finding some dimensional two by 10 lumber. In fact, I had to go about 30 minutes away just to get some uh, from, from a lumber yard that was about uh, two and a half towns over. So uh, very, very hard to come by and you really don't want to procrastinate on that because you you need materials in order to build your garden beds. Now the second thing that you want to consider with your garden next year are seeds. Now no matter what you're growing, you need seeds to grow it. That could be tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, zucchini, lettuce, kale, it doesn't matter. You need to start from a seed. And seeds are going to be very hard to come by next year. The amount of gardeners this year has increased exponentially, which has been a nice thing for people that sell seeds like us. However, it's also been a very scary thing for people like us because getting the supply of seeds for people like us to supply people like you, it's very difficult. And so I'm not saying to rush out and, and hoard seeds. Do not do that. 
Do not do that whatsoever. It's only going to make it harder for everybody. Be sensible. Realize that supply is going to come back. But seeds are something that they do take time to produce. You know, growers all around the United States and around the world are growing more seed than ever. But the downside to that is it takes time for those plants to mature and provide seed. It's not, you know, you can't put on a production line and just produce more. You, know, you can't expand like that that fast. And so there is kind of a, a time lag of about one to two years where there is going to be some, uh, some shortages. So you do want to take that into consideration when you are looking at seeds. Get your seeds now. Do not wait for the spring. Now, the third thing you want to really consider are preservation methods. When you have your garden and you get all your harvest, the next question is what do you do with that harvest? We have seen some huge shortages with things like canning jars, but also things like vacuum sealers. The vacuum sealer, uh, the, the food saver vacuum sealers have been in super short supply. I wanted to get another one for this year, an upgraded larger, uh, larger size. They were completely sold out and back ordered for four months. So it's really something that you want to look at because you don't want to get caught with this huge harvest and not know what to do with it or where you're going to put it. So that's something that you really want to look at is right now there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of supply coming back in the line in terms of um, like uh, canning jars and also vacuum sealers because right now most of the people are not uh, most of the gardeners are not getting harvests right now and so that's when a lot of these suppliers are getting to kind of recoup and uh, and restock the shelves and you want to do that another thing you want to really do is look on places like facebook marketplace craigslist or uh, or even you know um, your local uh, swap sites and things like that because a lot of people uh, that were into gardening and did buy and did you know uh, really predict that they were going to use this stuff didn't use it and we're seeing a, quite a few of them come on swap sites but the thing is they go very quickly because the people that do intend on using them for the next year are buying them already and so get ahead of the game and get yours now and know that you might need these things because i know personally we can things like uh like spaghetti sauce pizza sauce uh, we'll do canned whole tomatoes we will do um, we will do uh, we'll freeze uh, like uh, actually um, like wilt down and freeze spinach kale and arugula um, for things like soups and stews and uh, just everyday cooking pasta dishes you name it we'll do that um, and then also we'll freeze things like peppers. Uh, we'll, do, we'll freeze a lot of peppers um, and we'll also even freeze onions. And so we get a lot of things that we, that we like to freeze or can and it's been tough for us this year because we haven't really had all those, <laughs> we haven't had really all those materials that it requires to get the job done. All right, and the fourth thing that you should really consider getting right now before the springtime is potting mix. Now, we got potting mix because we grow indoors in our indoor garden with potting mix. And we do a combination of hydroponic and kind of soil gardening. And I had to go get some potting mix. And what I was surprised about is that when I went to uh, Home Depot, what they normally do is during this time of year, they'll have it all tarped off. It's not for sale. It's kind of like a, a seasonal item that they put it away. And it's not really worth having out on the main floor for sale because no one else is buying it. But what I found very interesting was that this year, it was not only out, but it was being advertised. And I think that's because a lot of people are starting to already show interest and a lot of big box stores are saying, well, I think it's gonna be a busy year, so therefore let's start predicting and let's start anticipating. And so a lot of places are starting to carry it. So what I really want you all to do is understand that there is a lot of demand still for things like potting mix and you don't wanna wait until spring to carry the to go buy the potting mix go buy it now throw it in your raised beds build your raised beds get them all set up and actually fill them right now that way you don't have to wait or go buy it now and then throw it in your garage storage unit just store it in a tarp in your backyard but don't wait because it's going to be a precious commodity come spring i guarantee it And the final thing that you do not want to procrastinate on for any reason is garden tools. 
for some reason, gardening equipment has been an extremely short supply. I went out and I had to buy a new wheelbarrow because my other one, uh, the main wheel support actually broke. I had to go buy a new wheelbarrow. And what I found is that I only had two options to select from when normally I would have about 15. And so that's because they were all sold out. Same thing with shovels. I wanted to get a couple more shovels for, uh, for our, uh, for our um, patio garden and for our home garden. Just like regular small little hand shovels. Nothing special. But I was so shocked that there was only one type of, uh, of our favorite Fiskars hand trowel available. The rest were completely sold out. Every single one was sold out. Another one that I thought was really interesting were gardening gloves. I thought, how could gardening gloves be in short supply, but we had a quite a few people that wanted to take up gardening and so we wanted to get them all gardening gloves so that they could grow a garden, people that worked with us at the office. We had a patio garden and a lot of them worked in the patio garden, so I wanted to get them gloves, I wanted to get them, get them a nice pair of gloves and I was so shocked that there was only a few pairs of those plastic nitrile gloves available. They were all sold out and I thought to myself, what, what on earth is going on? And what I realized very quickly is that the supply chain is, is, uh, is really shrinking for a lot of these things because unfortunately, a lot of these materials are made overseas and there's a lot of disruptions in particular with things coming from overseas because there were increased tariffs, there was, um, there was shutdowns overseas that, uh, that you basically stopped production all, uh, altogether and uh, also, there was a lot of slowdowns with uh, different cargo and things coming overseas. And so you had all of these different moving parts that led to a lot of shortages with things that were made overseas. And like I said, unfortunately, a lot of our garden tools and garden equipment is made overseas. And so um, buy them now, get them now, and get them so you're ready. Don't wait, because if you're going to have a garden and you've already made the decision to have a garden, there's no point in waiting. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And again, this was not to scare people. This was definitely not uh, intended for that whatsoever. I just would really encourage you all because as someone that has gone out and seen these things, and I know that a lot of you wanna get started with a garden, and I encourage every single person to start a garden, even if it does contribute to the overall shortages that are out there, I would encourage you to get a garden started. It is the most rewarding thing that you could possibly do, and it's one of the best ways to secure food security for your family. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.